you uploaded a clip of um, Joe Rogan talking to Alex Jones. Now, obviously, you guys know what's going on with Alex Jones at the moment. He's being sued by a family. I'm not sure if it's the families or one family member from the Sandy Hook tragedy or massacre. And obviously they're suing him because he basically said on his podcast or on his streams that he thought that whole Hat Sandy Hook thing was fake and those people were all crisis actors and stuff and it didn't happen and just kind of, you know, really disgraced and disrespected the um, legacy and the passing of all those small children that died in that absolute horrendous, horrendous, horrendous school shooting, right? Cool. But the interesting thing about Alex Jones is that Joe Rogan is a big fan of his. He loves, Joe Rogan loves Alex Jones. And I don't mind Alex Jones also. But I also think one of the weird things about these guys in general, I think overall, these LA podcast community come comedy type guys, they seem to have, there's no middle ground when it comes to their friendship. It's either they're super hardcore fans of yours, right? Where you can do no wrong. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah, cool, you can. They're either super hardcore fans of yours where you can do no wrong, right? Or... They're, how do you say? Or they're like, or they don't know you exist. But there's no middle ground. There's no like, okay, cool. We understand that. Yeah, there's no middle ground. And also the other thing I like, I, I don't like too about these comedy, comedy guys is that for some reason, they don't understand why the public that doesn't know the person intimately might not like them. And a good example is Brendan Shorp. For the longest time, his friends in the comedy scene could never wrap their head around why people online wouldn't like Brendan. Like, from what you just see of him online, the content you view via your phone, via your fucking desktop computer, via your laptop, whatever you view fucking content on, you, he can come across like a douche. But for some reason, those guys would never admit, oh yeah, I understand why he comes across as a douche, but he's still my friend. It was always like, oh, these guys are haters, they don't know him, he's a really nice guy. It was a, it was a really strange... Um, reality to be in because it felt like we were on one side of reality and they were on the other side of reality and the same thing goes to Joe Rogan with Alex Jones he could never understand why some people would think Alex Jones is a complete um what do you call it blowhard and talks out of his ass doesn't know what he's talking about and just a complete you know bullshitter and a grifter but on his side he thinks Alex Jones is a fucking um what do you call it he's like a maverick he has all these rare insights that no one knows about he reveals all these conspiracies he was always right at the end blah 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 and I think this clip that somebody put on Reddit has really aged like milk. And I think they actually put it in the subreddit aged like milk, where it's fucking Joe Rogan telling Alex Jones, and I quote, I know you're not full of shit, which now, considering what's happened to Alex Jones, is a fucking brutal quote to have over your head. But I'm pretty sure if Rogan saw this clip, he would still say, I don't care, Alex Jones is my friend, he can do no wrong in my eyes, which is a really strange way to have friendship and to connect with people, where they can't do any wrong in your eyes whatsoever. I don't really understand what that level of friendship, but anyway, let's continue. This is Joe Rogan talking about Alex Jones a few years ago. You mean I'm right about it all. I'm only seeing the like the code. But I'm wondering, because of the fact you're telling me that you had these dreams that came true exactly the way you dreamt them, I know you're not full of shit. I've... Uh, you're not a liar. I've known you for a long time. If that really did happen to you, if this is your real life experience. Oh, famous last words. You're not a liar. Famous last words. Oh, 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 oh. I want to know what the fuck that is. Are you, are you, are you on the periphery? Do you have your finger on a membrane that maybe other people can't totally touch? Where occasionally, just occasionally, you get a little peek through and you get to see the other side. Even if it's only once or twice in your life. Who's to say that what you're experiencing by being able to see these things that manifest themselves realistically in the future, that this isn't what human beings will have five years from now or a hundred years from now? Well, sure, exactly. Right? We think of like a cell phone being magic hunters. We think we're all the same. Yeah, sure, whatever. We're being a cell phone when he talks out of his fucking ass, that guy, man. But what a brutal clip in it. That did not age well. That did not age well in the absolute slightest, isn't it? Considering what Alex Jones is going through. Oh my bloody god. That did not, that did not grab his the slightest. Uh. Gotta fucking love Alex Jones in it. Absolute Looney Tune. And of course, this clip as well, um, courtesy of the trial, doesn't really paint Alex Jones in the best way, also, because. I wonder, really, what do you guys think? What do you think happened to Alex Jones on that whole Sandy Hook thing? Why do you think he went so far off the reservation? 
Because I didn't mind him at first. I actually thought he was quite fun to watch and listen to. In terms of conspiracy, I still think he's maybe one of the best broadcasters that we have in the world out there at the moment in terms of being real blockbuster, as fucking Brendan would say. Like, he provides actual entertainment. He can go for hours, the fucking papers and stuff. What happened, do you reckon? Why, why do you think he did that? Sand- why do you think he, he just, like, decided, okay, Sandy Hook crisis actors let's go after the kids family let's disparage them like what why do you think he did that like what what was going through his head i wonder what happened man because that legitimately what might be one of the biggest um let me see if i can get my phone charger that might be one of the biggest faux pas in the history of faux pas like that legitimately was the one thing that's absolutely destroyed his legacy absolutely destroyed his legacy to the point where I don't think it's ever going to be recovered. Really don't. Because I think a lot of people didn't mind him as like an alternative. Because imagine what Alec Jones could have been. What he could have made InfoWars to be. InfoWars could have been like a legit competitor to like CNN. It could have turned into like a, a legit media organization, a news organization providing alternative news. The truth. Um, the peak behind the veil. Um, you know, all that, all, all that good stuff. It could happen. I really did think it could happen. But unfortunately... For Alex Jones, for whatever reason, he didn't want to do that. And I guess he went off the reservation. What do you guys think happened to him? He's been active since the 90s. Someone came to him and convinced him that their false info was legit. Oh, is that what you think happened? Someone actually told him the crack success and he actually believed that info. That's why he went off the reservation with it. Um, he probably didn't want to talk about it uh, back as he's the same because he was too deep in it already. Yeah, true. Splash Daddy says, I think he was just um, saying a theory he came up with in the moment. Yeah, but that's a mad, you can't, you just can't do that, man, unfortunately.